Do you remember programs like Stacker, DoubleSpace or DriveSpace? They promised that you downloaded some software and it would magically double the capacity of your hard drive. So this is what we will be checking out in this video. Are there any negatives and is it worth it using with your retro gaming PC? DriveSpace is the command. Here we're getting a little bit of information. It talks about loading the drive space bin driver and it requires, well, 40 kilobytes of memory. That is quite a lot. I found a cool article in the German PC player magazine. This is from March 1993, where they looked into, yeah, software that could double the capacity of your hard drives. They mentioned programs like Stacker or Superstore. They did really well with this aspect here where they tested how well games can be compressed and unfortunately the reality is that games are not that suitable for data compression because most of the game assets are already heavily compressed but we can see Windows and productivity software has a much better success when it comes to compression. For this video we're gonna go with expanded memory and the mouse driver. Let's have a look at the memory. Maybe we will see a difference once the disk compression software is loaded. So we have available 617 kilobytes of conventional memory. Here we can see the SD card inserted into a modern computer with a USB SD card reader. So I have four partitions. They are all around two gigabytes and this is the C partition and look at that, we are almost out of space. So I'm really interested to see what will happen because I believe once we compress the drive, we might actually not be able to access it through a modern computer. And I'm also curious if you can only compress the uh, C partition and leave the other ones untouched. So yeah. I'm excited, let's fire up our retro PC and find out. Press enter to set up drive space. Ah, custom setup. Let's have a look what this gives us. Compressing an existing drive, create a new empty compressed drive. So this is interesting, it's only giving us the option for E and F, but not for our two drives that already contain information. So let's try something else. Let's run fdisk and I will delete those other partitions. Okay, so drive space did not find any drives that can be compressed. To compress a disk first, make sure it is formatted and does not contain over 512 megabytes of data. Okay, so that is the criteria now that makes sense. Okay, let's press enter here, express setup, and then we select continue. Let's have a look. Drive C is mentioned here. It's taking about one hour and one minute. Okay, to compress this drive, press C. It's running the scan disk. Let's see if I can cancel the surface scan. There you go, I can continue regardless. Drive space is examining your system. Okay, it will now reboot. Well, the boot menu is still working. And here we go, it's creating the compressed drive. We see a completion indicator and also, yeah, an ETA should be around an hour. So the ETA is now already much better. It should be completed in around 20 minutes. Maybe because we're using an SD card flash based storage. It's much faster with small files compared to a mechanical hard drive. It just finished and it's now telling us it is about to defragment the hard drive. So hopefully that's a task that we can cancel because we're using flash based storage. And here we have Microsoft defrag underway. This is something you want to do with a mechanical hard drive. It can speed up accessing sequential data, but on a flash based media, it will just wear out your drive. Oh no, that doesn't look right. Free space after compression, 440 megabytes. Drive space has created a new drive K. Why? That contains 
1699.3 megabytes of uncompressed space. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to compress the entire drive. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, let's do a reboot. Okay, here we go. Boot menu is still working. Let's see if anything's changed. I can't see any information about a driver being loaded. So let's have a look at the memory we have available only 596k that is unfortunate and we can see that drive space okay so drive space has been uploaded into the UMB area uh, 39 kilobytes but because of that a, a huge chunk of MS-DOS is now sitting in conventional memory the check disk confirms that the C partition is only around 500 megabyte here we have the SD card back in a modern computer. So let's have a look. The partition is still showing up as two gigabytes, but when we open a drive, look at that. There's now one large drive space file. So this is the uh, file that's now compressed. It contains all the DOS files that we had previously. So that means on a modern machine, we can't access these files anymore because there's no way to load the drive space driver under a modern Windows operating system. Can we reverse the process? So let's have a look, see if we are getting any options to uh, yeah, decompress, uninstall the drive space driver. When we run drive space after having compressed the drive, we're getting all sorts of menu options here at the top. Compress, tools, help. Under tools, I spotted uncompress. Let's have a look. And now it's running the scan disk, but it seems to have a few additional checks that are not part of the normal scan disk routine. And here we go, drive space is now uncompressing drive C. So let's have a look what's happening here. The host drive, drive K, will be removed and any files on it will be moved to drive C. So let's let that run and then hopefully we have our system restored to the initial status. Removing drive space confirmation. There are no more compressed drives. If you want, you can now uninstall drive space. Yes, let's do that. And here we go. We're going with expanded memory and mouse. Let's see if we have our memory back. There you go, 617 kilobytes. And let's run check disk. We should have our two gigabyte partition. Here we go. So I dug a little bit deeper and it turns out that the drive space that comes with DOS version 6.22 indeed has a limit of 500 megabyte partitions. But this is not the end of the video. There is a upgraded version, version 3 of drive space, which is part of the Microsoft Plus pack for Windows 95. Drive space also is not compatible with FAT32. And look at that, drive space version 3 is part of Windows 98. So you guys know I love Windows 98, so let's go with that. And here we are, I installed Windows 98 SE. We've got a Pentium MMX running at 133 megahertz with 128 megabytes of RAM and a GeForce 4 MX. Here we can see all the partitions. So I'm using a 16 gigabyte SD card and because we're using FAT16, it has split up the drive into two gigabyte partitions. Just the final one is a little bit smaller. My default Windows 98 installation did not have drive space installed. We need to go to the control panel, add remove programs, and then here click on Windows Setup, and then navigate to the right component to install the disk compression technology. And now in the start menu under programs, accessories, and then system tools, we find some software here, compression agent. Here we go. It mentions drive space three. Do we want to run it? Yes, we do. Here we see a list of all our physical drives, including the floppy drive. I wasn't aware of that. Apparently you can also compress your floppy disks. And up here 
are all sorts of menus that we can play around with. On this system, the C drive has the Windows setup files and also the Windows installation. The D drive, I have maxed out the partition with some DOS games, only 90 megabytes available. So I think I'm gonna go with drive E. This one is blank. So let's compress this one and then copy all the games from the uncompressed D into games two. Drive E is selected. Let's have a look at some of the options we have under settings here. Look at that. We can change the compression method. Not recommended for 486 based computers. Well, let's go with that. We have a Pentium MMX. And then I guess we select drive, compress, one gigabyte partition of uncompressed free space. Let's see if I can change that. Okay. Can I set that to zero? It's too small. Ah, I cannot. So unfortunately we have another limitation here. It only seems to support one gigabyte partitions. Anyway, let's go ahead with that. Startup disk. No, we don't need that. And I don't want to back up anything. Here we go. Drive E has been compressed and contains two gigabytes of free space. Host drive K will have one gigabyte of free space. So yeah, they're assuming a ratio of one to two in terms of compression. Very optimistic. So this is K, the host drive for E. Let's go into the folder options. Go to view, hidden files, show all files. And we should be able to see our drive space file here. And it's one gigabyte. So I want to do some benchmarking. I've got a bunch of DOS games here. And what I want to do is copy a bunch of games onto an uncompressed drive, measure how long it's going to take, and then do the same operation, but copy it onto E, which is the compressed drive. Here we go. Let's copy the general MIDI and Sound Blaster FM games folders. They're around 700 megabytes. And now we're copying the same games, but onto the E drive. Well, I don't think we need to do any fancy benchmarking. We can already tell that this copying is taking a lot longer. When booting into MS-DOS mode, we're getting, unfortunately, a nasty surprise. We run the mem command and we can see, oh dear, we only have 526k of conventional memory available. Double space, uh, taking up 49 kilobytes of conventional memory. And there is some upper memory being used, but all in all that just leaves us with 526k of conventional memory. And that is a real issue. Many, well, not, I wouldn't say many, but there are quite a few important DOS games that will not run with this low amount of conventional memory. Let's run a bunch of games and see if we can pick up any performance difference. 3D Bench, we're getting a score of 35.5. This is 3D Bench 1.0 C and we're achieving this by disabling the CPU cache. So this mimics the performance of a 486. So guys, what is my take on using drive space or double space or stacker with your DOS or Windows 98 retro gaming PC? We saw many downsides. There are performance issue, the compressing and decompressing the background, well, it takes CPU power, so copying and loading games will take longer. Especially under Windows 98, with drive space version 3, we're losing a ton of conventional memory to the extent where many DOS games will not run. All the versions that are tested in this video seem to have some limitations in terms of partition size, so that's a bummer. And also, FAT32 is not supported. There are also issues with data integrity and reliability. If you turn the computer off, 
before it was able to uh, store information in that compressed file, then the file might be corrupt and you will lose all your information. But also, when it comes to storage for our retro PCs, well, we are spoiled for choice. We can use mechanical hard drives, modern SSDs with a SATA 2 ID adapter, SD cards, CF cards, and any sort of capacity limitations in the BIOS or with the operating system, well, there are ways around it, either through hardware or software. And in Windows 98, for example, you can go up to 120 gigabytes. And if that's not enough, you can hook up uh, a NAS through your network, use FTP and access many, many terabytes of information. All in all, it is not something I can recommend for your DOS or Windows 98 retro gaming PC. It's an interesting look back at the 1990s and what sort of technology was around. And yeah, it's, it's fun sort of tinkering around with it. But in terms of getting more games onto your retro PC, it's not something I would recommend. And now I would love to hear from you in the comment section. What about stacker, double space, drive space? Have you used any of these tools to expand your hard drive capacity? Was it a success? Did you have any issues? Please share your story. And that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.